Hey guys, Sam here at NA Studios. Today I want to show you everything you need to know about exporting stems within Logic Pro X. What stems are, why you should be exporting them, and more importantly, how you can do them to best fit your project. Let's check it out. So here I've got a session and I've got all my drums at the top, bass, guitars, and vocals. And I want to export the stems here. Now, let's just work out what stems are and what stems aren't. So stems are essentially buses. They are combined instruments, so you would have a drum stem, which would be your entire drum group, all of the drums in one stereo file. Multitracks are not stems. So here, this is a multitrack. We've got, what, 70 tracks here. You would not expect to get 70 tracks as stems. If you wanted a full multitrack mix, which you can do in Logic Pro, and I'm gonna show you how, then you can have that, but that's not actually what stems are. Stems, you can think of as buses. They are combined instruments. The lines kind of blur a little bit because sometimes people will want a drum stem minus kick because they want the kick as well, or a snare as well. So they're a little bit blurred, but stems in general are groups of instruments. And that's important as we move on. So let's look at exporting our standard stems here. So I'm just gonna select all of my, essentially all of my groups, all of my buses, mostly everything that has the uh, the kind of yellow icon here. So I want my drum room and all the drums that come with it. I want my bass stem, I want my guitars and all these effects as well. I want my vocals, I want my backing vocals and I want all my effects as well. Now the way that Logic does this is you select the bus, you select that output track and anything that is going to it will be exported. However, it won't necessarily have all the effects on it and you can kind of tell it what you want it to do. So let's look at this in a bit more detail. Let's go to File, Export, and then we're going to export these 14 tracks as audio files. And we get a dialogue here, which is super important. So let's just take a look at all these options here and see which ones are gonna be best for your scenario and which ones are gonna be best for any given scenario. So I'm just popping these in a folder called stems. This is just in the project directory. The range is important. So trim silence at the end of the file, that's kind of a standard way of doing things. It means that everything is gonna start at the very beginning, but if an instrument doesn't continue to the end of a the track, then it's not going to export a load of silence at the end. And that's fine. It doesn't need to because everything's still gonna line up at the beginning of the track. Then we've got export cycle range only. If we set our locators around a certain section of a song, say we just want to export the verse or the chorus, then we can do that by selecting export cycle range only. And then we've got extend file length to project end. So within your project, it will have a specified end. So it's not just where the locators finish, it's where this little guy over here is. That is the project end. So our save format, typically we can use WAVE and AIFF kind of interchangeably. In AIFF, it's a useful format because we can store things like um, markers and locators and stuff in there. So that could be useful if you're going to be giving that session to someone else and they need to know where these sections start and finish, where the chorus is, where the verse is, whatever. CAF is a little used format and it's to do with how things are stored and the maximum file size. So if you have a WAV file, then it has a maximum length that it can be. It has a maximum duration and a maximum file size. With CAF, that kind of gets rid of all that and it just means you can store this as as longer file, as higher file size as you like. Typically we wouldn't use that, we're just gonna go for WAV or AIFF, but it's useful to know. So for this, I wanna go for AIFF because I want to store my locators. Bit depth, everyone should know what that is. Um, I've recorded at 24 bit, so I'm going to export at 24 bit. If it was recorded at 16, you can export at 16. 32 bit float is a discussion for another day. It's not something we're gonna worry about too much now, um, but it just extends the dynamic range of what you've got based on the processing that you've applied. Let's not go into that right now. 24 bit is fine. If we were using multi-output software instruments, such as drum tracks or anything like that, where we had multiple outputs, we can select those here and we can do them as just a kick, a snare, or whatever we want. Arguably, that's a multi-track. That's not actually a stem, but hey-ho. And then this is the interesting bit. So, bypass effects plugins. This is going to mean that everything is completely dry. If you've got an EQ or a compressor on a vocal, for example, then once you check this bypass effects plugins, it's not going to listen to any of that. It's just going to be completely dry. That may be what you want if you're opening it up for a mix in another session, or it may not be what you want, but that's for you to decide. I don't want to though. Include audio tail. This is to do with reverbs and things like delays, anything that will extend after the actual region has finished. So say an audio region for a vocal, for example, is two seconds long, 
and then the reverb actually carries on after that two seconds. If you check this include audio tail box, then it means that it will carry on until it detects silence at the end of the reverb. Typically, that's a good thing to check. Include volume and pan automation. This is important if you're automating things to go left and right, up and down, whatever it is, um, then that's going to be handy here. So if you want to include your automation and your volume changes, pan automation, whatever it is, then you can do that here. And the normalize function, so off, overload protection only, or on. So when we normalize a file, it sets the loudest part of that file to 0 dB, to the very top of the kind of listenable spectrum. If we want to do that for all the files, then we can do that by clicking on. But remember, that's going to alter our mix. If we've got faders all over the place, as we tend to in a mix, then it's just going to listen through to all the files and shove them all up to 0 dB at the peak. Typically, that's not what we want to do, but in some scenarios, it may be. Overload protection, it's only going to normalize if it detects a peak. If it detects something going into the red zone, into the distortion level, then it's going to bring that down and make that 0 dB. That's kind of a good one, just as a bit of a safety net to have on your session. And off means we disregard any of that normalizing and we don't have any normalization. Everything is as is. Let's set it like that for now. And then, of course, we can name stuff. So this is something that came in a few versions ago, and it's super handy because it means that we can name things in whatever way we want. Typically, I have it as track name, and that goes in the pattern. So pattern is how it's actually going to name things, the kind of naming convention. First off, we're going to have track name, and then we're going to have custom in this scenario. So if I wanted to have space 01, then it would do that. Or if I wanted to have it so it was incremental, so the first bus was 0, 01, next one was 0, 02, we can do that as well. If we just get rid of custom and then put in increment, then it means that it's automatically going to go and name them 0, 01. But a trick there is that if you don't want to have it all as one word, which typically I don't, you can put custom in between them and you can just put custom as a space, which is quite handy. And it just helps with if you're a little bit specific how you like your files named like me. Okay, cool. So I think we're ready to export our stems now. All we're going to do is go to export and we're going to have all of our stereo files there. We're going to have all the effects. We're going to have all the actual tracks as well. And we're going to bring those into the session and we're going to hear exactly what it sounds like. So I've now got all these stems and I can just drag these into my session. And I'm going to create some new tracks for them. And if we go down to the bottom, we can see that all of these are the stems that I created. They're in alphabetical order, so they're not in exactly the same order they were in my session. Um, so this is what we were talking about at the end, trim silence at the end. This vocal here doesn't actually extend to the end, so it's not giving it to the end. But crucially, it has given us the silence at the beginning. So if I were to play this all the way through, then we would hear that it's exactly the same as the actual mix that we had in the session, because we've exported every single bus and everything was going to a bus. Okay, cool. So crucially here, we've got vocal reverb down the bottom and we've got some slap back and we've got vocal delay. We've got all our effect sends here as well, which is so important because we don't necessarily want these to be grouped inside the actual vocal itself. We don't want it to be kind of printed on that track. We want the ability to change the level. If we're exporting stems, then it means that someone else, or perhaps us, we're going to be changing the mix, we're going to be changing the sound. So you want to give that person, whether it's you or someone else, as much control over that as possible. So here you can take a listen to just the vocal effects. So you've got those separate from the vocal, and the vocal just sounds like this. The things all around me, I don't understand them. So that has got all the compression and EQ on it, but we've got all the effects on a separate track, which is really important. So that's how we can export all of our buses. We can export everything as stems. It needs to be sent to a bus though. That's really important because it means that everything is grouped in one place and Logic will just detect that all the audio is going to that one place. If you don't have your buses on your arrange window like I do here, then what you can do is you go to your mixer and select perhaps this one and you press Control and T and that is going to bring it up as a lane in your arrange window. And that's going to mean that you have control over the automation and stuff that you can draw in. But also it means you can select it in the arrange window to export as stems here.
So we've got lots of tracks here. Perhaps we don't necessarily want to export stems. Perhaps now you've heard what I said at the beginning and realized that stems aren't actually what you want. You do want individual tracks. Well, we can do that as well. We're just going to select absolutely everything. We're going to go to that export menu again within file. And then we can go to all tracks as audio files. Now, there's a difference here. We either want to export 43 tracks or we want to export all of them. 43 tracks would be just the audio tracks. So we wouldn't get those buses. We would just get kick, snare, tom, floor tom, whatever. We wouldn't get the drum stem. So it's kind of the opposite of stems here. But if we go all tracks, then it means it will give us kick, snare, tom, guitar, whatever. And it'll also give us the buses and the effects. So if that's actually what you want, then this is the place you can do it. You can go to all tracks or you can go to just the audio tracks. So the numbered one will be just the audio tracks and then all tracks will be the buses as well. Now the great thing about exporting the buses like this is that it maintains all your sidechain information. So if you've got your kick which is being sidechained to the bass, it will automatically pick that up and it will output what happens when it's being sidechained. In this session, I've got the vocalist sidechained to the guitar, so it's kind of ducking the high mid range on the guitars when the vocal is present, and it's going to pick that up, which is going to be super useful. But if you don't want that, you can check that bypass effects plugins box and you don't have to have that embedded in if you want it a bit raw. Now there's one thing in this export menu that people rarely talk about, and it's how you can take stuff from Logic Pro and bring it into another door such as Pro Tools. And it's really easy to do. So I use Logic Pro for the majority of my stuff. I compose in it, I record in it, and I mix in it generally. But sometimes I do need to use Pro Tools for someone's session or someone's giving me a session, whatever it is. So I do have it on my machine. We can take stuff from Logic Pro and we can export it in such a way that it will open simply in Pro Tools. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. If we go to, again, the file export menu, and then go project as AAF file. And this means that it's going to export in a way that Pro Tools can read and can recognize. So if we go to our dialog here, we can just create a new folder maybe and call it AAF. And then we have our export settings here. So sample rate is gonna stay at 44.1, bit depth, it was recorded at 24 bit. I'm going to go to AIFF and then diver type nothing because it's at the same bit depth it was recorded at and then go to save and that is going to export the actual file information it's not going to export all of the audio information so for that we then need to go and export all our audio in the same way but we can bring that up in Pro Tools now so I've saved this into its AAF folder and here we've got a weird looking file so two things I want to address here it does actually save the audio files, but it saves them as regions, which is just kind of annoying. If you do it in the export way, as we just spoke about, export all files, then you'll get it from beginning to end, and that's kind of what we want here. So let's go on to our AAF file, right-click, open with, and go to Pro Tools. We can save that in the same folder. Here it is, AAF, and then go Create. So this gives us a few options within Pro Tools. This is not a Pro Tools video. I'm not going to worry too much about this. I'm just going to go OK. And it's going to bring up everything in Pro Tools that we once had in Logic on a track basis. Here you can see we've got absolutely everything here. And importantly, they're in the same order as well. Now, it doesn't create the buses because Logic and Pro Tools do buses in kind of a different way. But it does all the audio files. So if you've just exported all your audio files, then you can now just drag those straight into here. And you can continue mixing in Pro Tools should you want to. So there you go, Logic Pro X makes it so easy to export stems, multi-tracks, basically anything out of the door so you can then import it into something else. If you're sharing projects, if you're sharing files, whatever it is, it makes it super easy to do and it means you can get all those buses, all those audio files, the effect sends, whatever it is, as long as you can select it, you can do it. Thanks so much for watching, I'll see you again soon. Take care.